What's up guys, welcome back to Bulletproof Mindset, your go-to podcast for health, fitness and entertainment. So today is a special episode because normally every Thursday we have a guest on, but today we do not. Um, unfortunately some plans had fallen through, so the guest that was supposed to have on is not going to be on until another few weeks time. But nevertheless, we do not miss here. So it gave me a bit of time to think, I'm just going to go straight into this by the way. Um, this is the intro and uh, yeah, we're just going to hit home with... Something I've been thinking about the last couple of days when it comes to taking on some newer clients, we're chatting about their goals and getting into a deeper level of buy-in when it comes to why they are wanting to work on their health and fitness. And it's crazy how little we do this as people, myself included, like with my own goals, um, whether that's fitness goals, business, career, whatever you want to call it. Um, I sat down, I was interviewed on someone else's podcast today on the Mount Mindset podcast and I was going through my story and it, I was thinking to myself, I was like, fuck man, it took me to the age of 27 before I started challenging my own, like sticking to my own goals for what I wanted from life. I'd done it in the corporate setting and I know you guys love me seeing, he, uh, saying this buzzword of the corporate world and all that sort of stuff, but I thought it was just, that was just unique to uh, BT, b to, to the company that I was working for and didn't realise how powerful that exercise could be because in the past when I'd done it, it was like, right, let's set some goals for you as someone who's working in my team. Uh, you're not where we need to be performance-wise in terms of the average of where the site's at. So we need your call handling time to get to here. We need your revenue brought in here. We need your satisfaction score from your customers to be here. All pretty bullshit and irrelevant stuff, let's be honest. Um so I had a wee bit of reminiscing today and uh, it was quite good to go through that story. Um, I've obviously been interviewed on a couple of other podcasts, um, so it's always weird. Um, as I can obviously chat, as you guys will be able to tell, but when I have to chat about my story, it just doesn't it come out as natural as what I would like it to. But this was one of the best ones I've done. Uh, Jill's a fantastic uh, um, host in terms of the conversations, giving you the space to speak and then also challenging questions to go into a deeper level and uh, that's that's what I like about him so that podcast will be up uh, tomorrow on his podcast I'll leave a link below that if you're fancying that but anyway when I was looking through that store chatting through my own story um, all these ideas not ideas but all these things that I had I don't know for better words suppressed uh, going through that time as to some of the shit that I used to sort of put up with and didn't realise um, but one of them I don't know if we, we spoke it on camera or off camera. He was asking around why, what, what was the main motivation or driver to climb through the ranks? And I always thought it was like financial success. But what was the difference of me doing it and my peers not doing it? And again, I kind of was a bit silent. I was like, I wonder why not too many people did climb through the ranks. And the only conclusion I could come to was... Everyone's got their own story, their own upbringing, the people around them, all that sort of stuff. That all plays its part. But when I look around why I think I was good at my job and I had a lot of passion and drive to get better at my job was generally because I was working out. I, I'm, I'm a big believer of this. Now, hear me out. It's a bit of a fucking strange one. But as I was working on myself, I was challenging my own resistance it made me mentally strong to go into some of these roles that I guess on paper I wouldn't be qualified to do, yet I managed to talk a good game and not only go into these roles but have some like really strong success in these roles. And it's what I wanted to kind of do the podcast on. I'm uh, combining that with the whole goal setting and all that sort of stuff. Lifting weights goes way beyond the transformation. It goes way beyond the looks. Is it cool to look a certain way? I guess so, but it's fucking irrelevant. You know why? Because there's always someone that's going to have a more photoshopped picture than you. It's always going to be someone that is bigger than you, genetically blessed than you. But here's the one thing that we all cannot escape, and that is getting older. As we get older, our skin's not as tight, our skin's not as vibrant. Um, we start to age, right? We all start to age. But you see, the one thing that can slow that process down and give us a more youthful look, a more youthful feeling, that is muscle mass and 
getting strong by, and the only two ways to do that is by resistance training. Uh, I, I think a, a, a lot, I've been speaking about this a lot over the last 10 episodes, maybe even, this whole podcast is generally about this, but a lot of people do not go to the gym for whatever reason it is just now, a staggering majority of the UK or of the world do not resistance train on a weekly basis. And as we grow as a population, as things get more techno technologically advanced, uh, new iPhones, PCs, TVs, laptop systems, software, we're becoming more frail, weaker, we're in pain a lot more, we're becoming more stagnant. Yes, we've, we've got maybe a more of an obese population than what we did before. But I don't think that's the big breaker with this sort of conversation. I think it is this under-muscled and weaker state of people that we are becoming. Like, humans are getting weaker as we kind of go through time. And when you do comparisons to what people done back in the day to what some kids are growing up now, there is a staggering difference in terms of just physical strength. And I don't mean physical strength in that you need to lift a shit ton of weight. It's simple things like having control over your own body mass. And as that starts to drop down, you you lose confidence and you don't have faith in your own ability to do certain things. So your passion and your fun element to do the things you want to do, sightseeing, climb a hill, go out and see the world, or even just play with friends, kids... And, and, and their own kids by the way not just random kids but just being a kid again you're whatever it is you lose the confidence to do that and there's a big part of you is then taken away and that's why I was, I've, I've kind of re-evaluated over the last month or two even though, since I started this coaching game this was always the goal to get people lifting weights and getting them stronger getting them healthier and happier and I get caught up into the wave of the whole fat loss stuff because Every time a new client comes to me, fat loss is obviously the main thing that they're looking for. And recently, I've really had to challenge their ideas. I've done it at the start, but even more so now. The good thing of challenging this now is, with social media growing, people are exposed to more transformations, they're exposed to more diets, they're exposed to more fitness challenges. And uh, the good thing is with this, there's a bit of a silver lining that even if you've been roped up into all that, that gives you more experience that if you then come to me after trying all these different things and I ask you this question that I know you want to look a certain way, but let's put some objective measures on it. What about where your squats at? What about having the ability to do a push up or a pull up? Putting these to more tangible things to focus on when it comes to strength, because you can't just fluke that. You can look at a transformation photo, stand in better lighting, uh, starve yourself and just be more disciplined with how much you move. But it's a short period of, of, of gain. It only takes a little snapshot of where you are in this timeline of life. Whereas all these other metrics you have to work towards, but you also get a bigger reward from it, from it in my opinion. And when I'm having these conversations with more of the recent clients, it's like, yeah, you know what? You're right. I I do want to be a certain way or I do want to look good, but when I go down to a deeper level, I want to be an inspiration for my kids. I want to be able to have the energy to do things with them, do the things I enjoy. And we think we enjoy sitting down, watching TV, watching Netflix, gaming, um, sitting around a table drinking and connecting with friends. And they're all things that we can get a dopamine hit from. But as we combine that with movement or getting out and seeing or doing a, an actual activity, that's where the real gold is. That's the way, That's where the real beauty in life is. So you should be bought into the idea of lifting weights. And you might be in a split just now where you're trying to grow some muscle, but get your arms bigger, get your shoulders bigger. I'm not saying it's a bad pursuit. It's nice to, it is, it's a good thing to have every now and then, but make the picture bigger. Like it's so small, you don't even realise some of the things that you're aiming towards. So, uh, but quickly before doing this uh, this episode, I was like, with some kind of powerful statistics I can throw out there to convince people to lift weights. Now I know there's a strong chance that if you're listening to this podcast, then you're pretty much bought into doing something with your fitness. But when it comes to strength training or resistance training, in other words, that is just a way of saying, look, you go into the gym and you lift free weights, not machines, not high circuit workout classes, not EMOMs and all that sort of stuff. Something that you can progressively see, measure and see 
increasing week on week and you have a good training program built around that. And that's why I say like one or two days a week is enough because if you do that one or two days and you're committed to a program that you follow as such, you have five other days to then pursue some of the other things. Maybe you like running, maybe you do like CrossFit, maybe you do like the high rocks hype. So you get to tap into some of these worlds, do those classes, but where true strength, true resilience and true just general grit and development in your own body, it lies within resistance training, right? Taking all that away though, forget about looks, forget about muscle mass. What is some of the pow most powerful statistics that I can highlight to get you more bought into this idea? And this is really hard to communicate to younger people. And it's crazy that I'm saying younger people is in our 30s. But the good news is if you felt a bit of a, a fucking, oh shit man, I am 30, I'm halfway through my life or halfway through to retirement, you might get a wee bit scary with your own mortality or scared of your own mortality. And you're like, oh fuck man, I'm getting old. When you look at these fitness competitions, by the way, see the guys who are setting world records or the best times, they fall in the age category of 30 to 39, right? So if you're in that category, do not worry, you are entering into your prime. And arguably, if you're someone listening to this in your 40s, 50s, 60s, or even younger, if you kind of take the approach of dedicating time towards your resistance training, as you age, you will get better and better with age, like a fine wine, okay? Yes, your skin might get a wee bit saggy, you might start to look a little bit older, but you would only be you will not be as old as you feel. There's a fantastic quote out there saying you can be the oldest person in the gym or you can be the youngest person in the care home. And what a powerful statement to kick this off with, eh? So let's run through what have I got? I've got uh nine, I guess, different points that I've kind of scoured the internet and kind of brought back. One of the first things is heart health, right? There's no doubt about it that cardiovascular training is what's been thrown out there. Run more, do your endurance. And we see all these people are long distance runners, long distance triathletes, swimmers, cyclists, etc., etc. But when it comes to strength training, the stronger we get that heartbeat, the stronger we lift or, or get our, our muscles moving, the better the blood flow is. And we have a fantastic benefit that comes to our heart health. So this uh, report here, Strength training just twice a week can reduce the risk of cardio cardiovascular disease by up to 40%. Studies are shown that lifting weights help lower blood pressure, improve cholesterol, cholesterol levels and reduce your resting heart rate. Now, I'm not someone that got caught up in the endurance hype. In fact, I was fighting against that whole movement for the last 10 years of my life and only just recently went into it. Biggest mistake I made was thinking it was one or the other. Both of them combined is a fantastic method to look after your health and your longevity. But one thing, if I had to pick one, I would not, I would still pick the strength training and lifting weights. I've told this story in the podcast before, but I had never climbed a Monroe before and I had friends who had done, I think they'd done like 30 or 20 Monroes and we ended up joining them on one of these weekends that we had free and I turned up my pair of Converse my shorts, just ill-equipped for this hill climb. Luckily, it was a nice summer's day and a sunny summer's day in Scotland, which is very rare. Anyway, we embark on this climb and we're walking. And look, don't get me wrong, it's challenging. My calves are cramping up, etc., etc. But we get to a certain point and, and the guys that I'm with, they have to stop first. And I'm thinking to myself, this is the activity that you do all the time. Why am I stronger in this pursuit? And that's because... There's a misconception out there just because you don't do cardio or you don't do any sort of endurance training, you're not actually working on your endurance. And the only point I'll caveat this with is the reason I think I found that easier than what I should have, someone in a similar position to mine, was because in my training I was doing compound lifts, I was doing free weight movements, but more importantly I was phasing those training sessions where I would do lower reps, medium reps, and then do shorter week stints of high reps, which was like 12 to 25 reps. If you've ever done high reps, like 20 reps of squats, that shit gets your heart going. That's like nothing else that you'll ever experience. But conditioning my body and my heart health and my tendons, my just everything to work in coordination towards that was a great thing that I'd done and made me resilient towards life. So I'm actually not surprised that just strength training alone twice per week can reduce your cardiovascular disease. Because the other thing you need to think of as well, like if you get cramp in your feet or you get 
um, like this tightness or soreness in your feet or your calves, that's the furthest away that blood flow and nutrients need to be sent from your heart. So the stronger that heartbeat is, the better the blood th- blood flow is to the long the furthest away parts of your body. More importantly, as you're strength training or as you are adding resistance to different parts of your body, you're building a stronger connection and in- increasing the blood flow to that particular part of your body. So guess what I'm doing? My shoes are off in the gym. I'm doing my walking lunges barefoot. So my toes need to contract. My, the muscles in my feet need to get stronger. As I do my calf raises, blood needs to go to that area. You get the point. Okay, point number two, diabetes management. Now, there is adult diabetes, which I think is classed as um, diabetes three. No, not three. What's it called again? I uh, slipped my mind. But when it comes to diabetes, I have had a couple of type two diabetes uh, clients and type 1. The difference is type 2 is developed and um, type 1 you're born with it sort of can't be reversed. Now resistance training Im- improves insulin sensitivity which can lower the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. According to research adults who lift weights are 30% likely to or, or sorry those adults who lift weights are 30% less likely to develop type 2 diabetes than those who don't. Just by lifting weights a couple of times a week, right? We have talked about diet, sleep hygiene, water intake, movement. We're fucking just talking about the simple thing of picking our weight up and putting it back down in a repetitive motion. How mental is that? How bizarre is that? Um, The adult diabetes is this type 2 diabetes that I was referring to where more and more adults are in their later age becoming type 2 diabetic. And that is poor lifestyle choices, inactivity, um lots of just excess body fat that their body then gets very resilient uh, to the insulin sensitivity and resistance training helps improve that and I've got two stories from clients that I've worked with in the past where as they started training we didn't even talk about weight in the scales it wasn't about fat loss but it was about them although they had an aesthetic goal for weddings and whatever it was like we've got plenty of time here you're on all this medication, you've just went in to uh, get your bloods done and you've got the news that you're type 2 diabetic, super, super new client. We started lifting weights, we worked on the squat, squat depth, deadlifts, overhead press, free weight movements. The exercises, yes, they're powerful in them sense, but the main thing was we were building strength and building resistance and building resilience week on week. After, what was it, seven months, we, I say we, she went into remission. She didn't need the medication, the metformin for the type 2 diabetes because her insulin sensitivity was improving. Her ability to utilise the foods that she was consuming was improving. And this wasn't just with one client, it was with another client as well, a guy this time that has um, frequency of his shots and everything managed to come down. We didn't quite go into remission uh, with the period of time that we're working with, but we've seen drastic improvements with how many shots that he had to take. Now, interestingly enough, the type 1 diabetic who is just like, that's his life, he is going to, he's been born with this uh, disadvantage when it comes to how uh, responsive his insulin was. He's seen massive gains in this as well. And I think we forget that poor lifestyle choices, poor nutrition sets us up for an even poorer quality of life. And if there's anything that can combat that, yes, losing fat's one element but more so building resistance and building resilience, strength and muscle is the biggest component. Okay, next one, osteoporosis prevention. That's the first time I pronounced that correctly, by the way. So weightlifting, no, actually that you know what, I say this is an obvious one, but as I've got more and more older clients, this is usually a challenge to fight them on this point. Weightlifting is one of the best ways to strengthen bones and it increases bone density by 1-3% to annually, helping prevent osteoporosis, especially in older adults and postmenopausal women. So for women, I think it's the age of 40, every year, your bones start to lose that, your bone density starts to decrease with weaker bones, easier breaks. It's bizarre how male and female bodies just have different uh, different anatomy responses to just aging, just getting older. But one of the things, especially particularly women, every single person, but more particularly women, if you're premenopausal, postmenopausal, doesn't matter where you are in this journey, by introducing lifting weights or resistance training, you will see massive benefits in that. Even those with uh, uh, oriasis, I was going to say, uh, arthritis, arth- what's it called? Arthritis? 
doesn't sound right. Am I saying that word correctly? Arthritis. Arthur. Oh my god. Yo, what what is going on? Arthritis. Arthur. Ars. Oh man. What? Arth. Let me get. I'm typing this. Arthur. Arthritis. Arthur. I cannot pronounce this. Let me see how to say. Who would have thought I wouldn't be able to say this word? No, it's not even coming up. Is it arthritis? It's not plain. I've not got any signal in here. But uh, anyway, I, those with like claw hands and all these different sort of variations of not being able to move a joint, this is a fantastic way to get blood flow moving, get nutrients to the joint, strengthen the tendons and the supporting muscles that move. We all think our we all think muscles is what moves weights, but it's our joints, our fingers moving, our wrists moving, our elbows moving, shoulders. The joint takes the the joint gives us the ability to move through whatever exercise it is that we're doing. Our muscles and tendons is what supports. Same with our ligaments. We can't build ligaments, we can't build tendons, but we can get those areas of our body stronger by increasing our resistance that we lift. Okay, maybe a wee bit more controversial. Mental health benefits. And you might be thinking, controversial, Dale, what on earth are you talking about? So when I was back in my corporate job, I knew that, those who chose not to lift weights and seek out help from the NHS and all this sort of stuff. I used to say that the gym would be a positive influence on what these people do, but I was not a PT at this time and I couldn't, that was just my opinion. It was just in conversation that I would have with friends who were on things and all that sort of stuff. But as I got into this space, I realised it's not... It's not that this should replace any medication, it should be in aid of. So the mental health um, benefits, or sorry, the mental health uh, prescriptions and all that sort of stuff that are given, that gives you the ability to see clearly. Think about, you're trying to drive, right? Driving in the dark and you're on the road, and you're like, I don't know where I'm going, I don't know if this is the right direction, I don't know if I'm on the right side of the road. And see the medication as turning the lights on. So the medication helps you see a bit clearer, but it's super, super foggy. And I don't know where I'm going with this analogy, but that's where the medication can allow you to steer you. Okay, I've got a little bit of time where I feel better. So let me do things that then positive, so positively keep me in that cycle of feeling better. And that's where I'd maybe a bit oblivious to before. But lifting weights has shown to reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety as of twenty as much as twenty to thirty percent. It releases endorphins, as we know, and can lead to significant improved improvements in your mood and self esteem. First hand I can tell you this is absolutely true. And I don't think it's the gym itself. I think it's the whole we know how valuable it is to work on ourselves and we don't do it. And this can be a self care routine, man. It can be a literally like you get a bath and <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just going to stop there you just bath right get a bath bomb that's you done but do a skincare routine you're taking care of your body you're taking care of yourself and you're kidding yourself on if you think yeah I love my body but then you go hammer the fucking the booze and the drugs and everything at the weekend You and then you feel shit on the Monday it's like yeah of course you're going to feel shit that can't last forever and no short term pleasures lead to this long term depression and anxiety and poor mental health there has to be something that you're doing that creates resistance in a healthy way and nothing does that better than resistance training running endurance there's other aspects of training that helps but we, today we're just talking purely about resistance training um so let's talk about improvement in mobility and balance so resistance training has been shown to reduce the risk of falls of up to 30 percent in older adults by improving muscle strength coordination and balance right this is a scary one people over the age of 60 if you fall by the age of 60, did you know you're 50% or so you have a 50% chance whether that fall puts you in hospital or you die? Do you know that's crazy? They are the two options. So you might fall and you might be okay. Or the alternative is you fall and you're at least in hospital or you die. How mental is that? And sadly, I've seen this with a close family member and our family. We are living on our own into our older age into our late 80s coming into our 90s like 
yes, okay, things were starting to slow down, vision was getting a bit blurry, confidence in our movement was getting a bit blurry, uh, dropping. One fall into a hospital, into an environment where there's lots of bugs and et cetera, viruses, whatever's floating about, and then health just went from, we're going to recover from this to she's now only got X amount of days left to live. It's so heartbreaking and sad to watch people go through that. And that's someone in their 90s, right? But this happens to people in their 60s. And if I was to kind of draw up or, or place any bets as to if that number will come down, I reckon it's going to be people in their 50s, the way that we are going. I mean, I've got friends who have got back pain and um, they're struggling to move about just now. Their quality of life is, yeah, okay, you can still get through it, but it's deteriorating fast and it will continue to deteriorate fast until, unless you ha have some form of resistance. Now, the beauty of this is whether you're listening to this at the age of 61 or you're listening to this at the age of 21, when you start, you see results. Okay, if you start sooner, you might see more results, but... I have single-handedly trained people and the oldest client I've had is 77 years old, retired postman who struggled to like just have this general coordination and by slowly improving their strength within the gym in a short period of time, he started reaping the rewards. Likewise, I have a couple of clients approaching their late 60s and in their 60s and even them, the strength, coordination, confidence and energy that they get just from lifting weights one to two times per week, right? One to two times per week. Not five, not six, one to two times, right? So I get timing and all, there's tons of barriers as to why people don't, but think about that for a sec. That's completely manageable. Every single person listening to this, can, ask, can we work out once per week for the rest of our lives to get these amazing results as to how much reduces our chances of dying and improves our quality of life? Absolutely, fucking lootly, right? <laughs> we should be all bought into this, but we're so caught up in, oh, I want to look like Seabum, I want to be a bodybuilder, I want to do a bodybuilding show, I want to do this. It's like, cool, do all that sort of stuff. But if that's the only driver as to what's keeping you consistent in the gym, you're going to have a problem once you achieve that goal. You're going to have a problem once you get in shape. You're going to have a problem once you build more muscle. It's like a never-ending game. The show, the focus needs to be, or the foundations for sure need to be bought into. Look, I'm doing this to be the best version of myself because then I can show up for the people that I love. It's, it's, I said it on the, the other podcast that you have all these problems and stresses in your life, hundreds, thousands of problems, until you have a health problem, that is then your number one problem. That trumps everything. And the one way you can't, like we all get, shit cards that are dealt to us but if there's one thing that's going to give you the best chance and no matter what situation is thrown at you that is by lifting weights right we're almost done here we're moving on to the oh sorry the last thing in improved mobility and balance by the way coordination is a f unbelievable cheat code Unilateral exercises, walking lunges is the biggest and best exercise I've done with older clients. Yes, they might have the struggles or knee pain to really go through the movement, but see just by stepping or standing on one leg and what that does to their brain and their cognition, oh man, it, it, it generally takes five years off their life instantly. Not off their life, sorry. Gains them five years, reverses their age by five years, uh, should I say, where they feel sharper. They are able to like listen I don't know, there's just, it's a hard to explain, but they're just a sharper human being. Right, nearly done here. Longevity, of course, we were just talking about that. Regular weight training is associated with 23% lower risk of premature death. Stronger muscles contrib contribute to healthier, longer life by reducing frailty and functional limitation as we age. Again, you hear me talk about this all the time, but... Yes, we might be, I always hear, so look at this person that died, they went to the gym, look at this person, she smoked cigarettes until our, our 102 years old. Yeah, but what is the quality of life? What's, really think about that. What's the quality of life you want to live in the last 10 years? Regardless of the hand that you're dealt with, I want to make sure that I'm setting my life up for, and I'm not wishing my life away, but I'm going to make sure that I'm going through life, training at the best and doing the things that I want to do, but also bulletproofing the future, building my physical pension for a, a stronger and healthier me. 
Uh, on to the next one, reduction of cancer. So this one's an interesting one. A study published in the Medicine of Science and Sports exercise found that regular strength training re- reduces all, sorry, reduces the risk of all cause cancer mortalities up to 17%, right? Every single cancer that you can possibly di- be diagnosed with, you will have a 20% chance or more, you'll have more of a 20, I always struggle to can communicate these, you'll have a 20% better chance of surviving that. That is insane. And what is the reason because that, well, stronger bones, more resilience, but really it's the muscle mass because when you go into chemotherapy or you go through your cancer treatment, your body's getting more frail and it's struggling to pump your heart, it's struggling to keep the liver functioning. All the fin- fascinating things that our body does on our own if we have this protecti- this protective armour, which in this case is our muscle, that slows that process down because our muscle gets used as that extra energy to begin with, then there's a bit of fat, and then you, you might have seen it, and if you have, and like, feel sorry for you because it's horrible to watch anyone go through, um, especially as they start to, it's like maybe a long-winded process and the end route is death and watching that, how that, deteriorate someone's lifestyle it's horrible horrible to watch so if there's a thing that's going to it might not cure it it might not make anything any better but if it's a risk that you're going to take then it's something that I, i'd certainly would um okay last two here this one gets a category in its own back pain because every fucking motherfucker's got it right now back pain for people with chronic back pain and resistance training can help reduce the pain intensity by up to 77 percent Lifting helps strengthen the core, back muscles, providing better support and pain management. Back pain, any sort of pain, is derived from weak tendons, weak muscles, weak joints. And the only way to strengthen your joints, it's no mobility, it's no sports massage, it's no chiropractor. It is by strengthening your body by lifting weights. It's by strengthening your body by resistance training. I keep seeing these things. I've seen a supplement the other day get rid of back pain by taking this, I thought it was like a leafy green, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? All gimmicky stuff, these things all have their value in some form or manner, but if you go and you do them and you don't resist and train, then guess what, you're just, you're literally on the path to more pain, more chronic pain, and it to get it to hit you harder as you go through, and it, it, as you get older with age. Last one, we got a separate one for lower risk of anxiety up to 20%. So strength training is shown to lower anxiety levels, likely due to the positive impact of exercise on stress and mood regulations. So yeah, it helps regulate your mood. You always feel better after you get a workout in. Um, the anxiety side of things, I wonder if it's the whole... And this is all speculation, but I wonder if it's closely linked to... Not necessarily better managing stress but the ability to go I can't do this oh my god I just done it like think about that for a sec think of something that right now you can't do in fact better a better exercise think of something or a time where you went I never thought I'd be able to do that but I did manage to do it I know you've all got a story we've all got something whether it's a gaming achievement whether it's the first run the first time you walked into the gym and getting a a career, whatever it may be, maybe landing a girlfriend for some of the guys out there. But think about that. There was a time where you didn't think you could do something and then you'd done it and you're rushed with this. Done. You're rushed with the dopamine hit and it feels fucking good. And that's what you can continuously get in and outside the gym, right? And all of this stuff has to be the cornerstone of what we do for life. We Lifting weights is generally the cornerstone of everything the one thing that's going to massively make an impact on all of our lives for the better is by resistance training a couple of times per week. To an extent, to a deeper level, that resistance training should be properly programmed. It should be consistently phased. It should have certain exercises in it. But putting all that to the side, as long as we are lifting weights consistently and we're building a bit of strength and the measurement is to build strength, you will see amazing returns on your health there is nothing better that has a more positive ROI on your ROI on your investment return on your investment than lifting weights and the tagline I've not said it in a little while but 
we need to be building our physical pension. What's the point in saving all this money and we get to this older age and we can't spend it? Think about it. Like, yeah, okay, you retire, you sell your business, whatever it is that you do, but you don't have the fucking functionality to spend time or spend the money with the people you love because you're in so much pain, you're so frail, and you didn't look after your health. Health is wealth, people. Um, it's a cheesy saying, but it's true. And without it, we're all fucked. We're all screwed. Uh, you could go even further with this. What's the point in living? What is the point in all this sort of stuff? Well, who knows? Your point is to find your own purpose and you've got people around you that love you and you've got people around you that you love and you want to show up for them, but you can't show up for them if you don't show up for yourself. So as much as this was an ad hoc episode and a special episode, I really enjoyed this. This was a good chat. Thank you for listening up until now. If you enjoyed today's episode, do us a favour, comment below, let me know what you think. And if you're new around here, first of all, welcome. Thank you for giving me the time. And uh, if you're a new listener and you haven't already, consider leaving a five-star rating on Spotify or head over to YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, leave a comment below and I'll see you guys on Monday. Monday? I'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs> Monday is the next episode though. <laughs>